Welcome to Mike Morrison Ministries, Church at the Barn, Saturday Night Life. In, uh, read a very familiar scripture. I don't know that we've took, taken the time to look at in a while. Um, let's read in 21 to get down there. For even here unto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that you should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not but committed himself to him that judges righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, so that we, being dead to sin, should live under righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls." Uh, let's read the Amplified Bible in 23 and 24. When he was reviled and insulted, he did not revile or insult in return. When he was abused and suffered, he made no threats of vengeance, but he trusted himself and everything to him who judges fairly. He personally bore our sins in his own body on the tree as on an altar, and offered himself on it, that we might die or cease to exist to sin and live to righteousness, by whose wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like so many sheep, but now you have come back to the shepherd and guardian the bishop of your souls. So, what that we might die and cease to exist to sin and live under righteousness. That's the whole point of the what Jesus went to the cross and paid for us to have, so that you and I could live a life without sin being a in the way, it's not in the way, unless we put it in the way. And I think our culture has trained us, and the world has trained us, to spend a great deal of time folk with the sin focus, critical looking at what's wrong with everything all of the time. And I believe it's stealing our happiness, it's stealing our joy, it's stealing healing, it's stealing prosperity, it's stealing the blessing. Because you can't look at what's wrong expecting what's right to come up. Because God set this in motion with your words. And out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth is going to speak. <clears throat> And if you're focused on what's wrong all of the time, too often you're going to be talking about what's wrong, and that's not going to release a blessing. It's going to release what's wrong. And it happens every time we do that. And I don't think anybody does it on purpose. It's just the way we're made. It's just the way God put this planet together, and he turned it over to us. And when we don't follow his directions we wind up being deceived and given a enemy who Jesus already defeated power back that Jesus gave us. He gave it to us. Then we focus on what he's doing, talk about what he's doing, and in the believing and saying, we release power back to him that Jesus took away from him, gave to us, and then we give it back to him. And uh, don't even realize we're doing it because it's a habit. It's the American way. It's the way the good old boys talk down at the coffee shop, and it's the way, you know, dad talked and granddad talked and great granddad talked, and it's, um, it hasn't 
developed for the better, it's got worse and worse and worse, and that's because of the um, influence of the media, because the news has got more negative, the movies have got more negative, the TV shows have got more negative, the Facebook has got more negative, Safari's got more negative. Everything that you've got to look at has takes a negative bent all the time, <clears throat> and we're we do not realize we've been we've been so close to it on a plane with it we just don't realize how negative we've become in not just in what we're saying but what we're expecting um when when a christian has a wreck this, should, this verse right here should be the first thing that pops in your mind. By his stripes, I was healed. And, and we have wrecks. I mean, this, this place, this planet's set up. Um, it's, it's fallen. And there's a lot can go wrong in the course of a day. And, uh, and God said, Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we'll fear no evil. We don't, we don't, there's no promise in the Bible that we're going to avoid trouble. In fact, Jesus said, trouble's coming. Get ready. There's trouble everywhere. See that ye be not troubled. Just because there's trouble, don't be talking about the trouble. Don't be looking at the trouble. Don't be focused on the trouble. What do you be focused on God's anointing and his ability to take you through it no matter what. No matter what. If you zig when you should have zagged, <laughs> it's just a bump in the road because by his stripes, you're healed. <clears throat> I remember uh, that's not always the way I thought in my life because I never, I didn't have this verse down in me deep. But I can remember some wrecks I've had over the years where when I got enough air that I could make a word would come out of him, what come out of my mouth was by his stripes I'm healed. That the, the, first, uh, the first thing I said, I come off of 13, had bales 13 high. I'm not sure how high that is, uh, 90, 90 pound bailed hay, uh, but it's pretty high. And I stepped out into space thinking there was another row of hay there that wasn't there and uh, did, a, did a half somersault and lit on the front tire of my tractor, uh, on my back, my back front tire of the tractor. And that, that's a hard little tractor tire, but I bounced. <laughs> I feel I was coming fast enough that I bounced up off the tire and then flipped over and face planted in the dirt and uh, could knock the air out of, out of me. But I knew I had a plan. As soon as I could get something out, it was by his stripes I'm healed. And uh, it it sounded terrible. It felt terrible. But but. From down in here, not in my head so much, down in here when that word come up out of me, I knew God had this, and I knew I, I, knew I was delivered from it. I was, knew it was just an attack from hell, and I was, <clears throat> that uh, God would, God is a miracle work in God, and miracles are available to his people. Anytime you need one, it's right there for you. If you'll get your faith over there on it and take it, and uh, don't get on the internet and find out what all could have be broke in your aching, hurting body. Get in the Bible and find out what God said is yours already. Go for the go for the miracle from the get go. There was there was, I don't believe there was anybody around that day. I, I was down there by myself, so. You know, sometimes there's people rushing around trying to call you an ambulance and everything, but there wasn't anybody there to do that. So 
I, I decided it would feel real good just to not move and just to pray and spend some time with God. <laughs> I wasn't this old then. This has been a good many years ago. And uh, that helped. <laughs> but, uh, of course, I wouldn't have been probably up there doing that now either. But uh, I know from that experience and many others that if the first thing that comes out of your Bible, out of your mouth is a cuss word, you're going to probably go through the whole rigmarole just like, just like natural man goes through things. When you hear a doctor's report, you're hearing, you're hearing what happens in the natural the natural recovery time, the natural recovery process, the natural uh, aids that they have to help you recover as fast as you can, and that's, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. But church, God gave us something better than the natural. But right when that's happening, you can, you can, you're gonna have to pick I set before you this day the blessing and the curse, life and death. Deuteronomy 30, 19, it's right there. Choose life. God, God gives you a hint. Choose life. And how do you do that? Same way you got saved. You believe in your heart and say with your mouth that Jesus bore my sin on his body on a tree so that I being dead to sin, could live under righteousness, and by his stripes, I'm healed in Jesus' name. That word, I looked it up today in the Greek, or yesterday, I guess. Iomai, I-A-O-M-A-I. Um, what it mean, but it, what's interesting is what it means in English. To cure, heal, Make whole. So by his stripes, I'm cured, healed, and made absolutely whole. There isn't anything that's not coming back to full restoration in Jesus' name. That's, that's your, when you say by his stripes, I'm healed, you're saying oh, there's, there's nothing the devil can steal. It's coming back. It's mine. God promised it to me. It's invisible right now. But I take it by faith, and it's, it's real. It might be invisible, but it's real, and I have it now. And the, my, faith in it, my faith in it being there is the connection that allows the anointing to manifest it in the earth or manifest it in my body. This is the same process that you can use for any need in your life. It's, it's the blessing. It's not just healing. It's wholeness. It's wholeness, spirit, soul, body, finances, and social relationships. Because of his stripes, we're in a blood covenant position where God can cause broken things to be made right. He can cause broken relationships to be made right. What he can't do is cause broken relationships to be made right when we're calling them broken. I remember uh, Kenneth Hagin, it comes to mind a lot. I probably think I mentioned it in a meeting maybe here last week, um, but it bears repeating. Uh, a woman came up to Kenneth Hagin and wanted him to pray for her son. She said, I'm afraid he's going to hell. And Hagen said, my, no sense me praying. And uh, she got, you know, offended and mad at him. <laughs> he, he said, you're his mother. You're closer to him than I am. If you're afraid he's going to hell, how am I going to stop it? Your faith is in him, him going to hell. I'm not going to pray for you until you're in agreement that he'll live and not die to declare the works of the Lord because it won't do any good as long as you're believing he's going to hell for me to believe he's going to heaven. You need to get in on it with me. 
And so she changed her tune and it worked. It took a week. How many of you have a week to see somebody saved? It's God's timing, but but it won't hap- it won't happen quickly unless we do it exactly the way God said to do it. So our confession, people think, well, you know what, that sounds like positive thinking. It's not about thinking. It's, got, it's not the mind. This is spiritual. It's not positive thinking. All right, it's good to think positively, but that's not going to get anything. It's taking the Bible, what God said, believing it in your heart, not your head, in your heart. In the, in the renewed, reborn God part of you where the Holy Ghost lives, down inside there in your spirit, you believe it. And then when you say it, it comes up out of there, not your head. By his stripes, I'm healed in Jesus' name. And you let go the miracle work and power of Almighty God, and it doesn't matter what the natural report is. It just doesn't matter. Now, there's nothing wrong with going <clears throat> to the doctor. Just go there knowing that they're working with natural things and you're believing God for supernatural. There's nothing wrong with medicine. There's nothing wrong with aid. There's nothing wrong with... Uh, if you're in pain, there's nothing wrong with getting some relief from it. But it's where your expectation is at. That's the key. Your expectation should be in the, in the miracle-working Almighty God. And His covenant gift that He's already given you, which is wholeness. I, I should have looked up the pronunciation of that to even scare it, but it's the cure. By his stripes, I'm made whole, cured, healed, put back absolutely right. I know, that, I know uh, of testimonies of people getting in meetings where that was being preached, this very same type message. <clears throat> and uh, people come out and go to brush their teeth the next morning and there's no fillings in their mouth. God put all their, God put all their teeth back while they were in that meeting. The anointing of God restored their teeth. Hallelujah. The, our expector as a body of Christ in the 21st century in the United States of America is too small. It's way too small. We have got to get back where we're looking to God first for his best. Not something that'll get us by, but his best. And I'll tell you something else that God showed me that he wanted me to mention here is when, it, when that healing power starts to hit, don't, don't settle for it until, it's, until you're made whole. Don't stop believing. When you get part of it, don't get so tickled with that that you just receive part of it. Hang in there and keep your faith on it until you're completely, absolutely restored. He renews our youth like the eagles, church. That the devil could, could, he'd get people to believe that at this age, I can only expect. You know, I'm doing pretty good for my age. How many of you ever heard that in your head? Get that kind of thinking. That's natural thinking. Get it out of your head. I uh, I watched Billy Graham uh, in giving a message from a wheelchair again today. That man is a 
um, testimony to uh, walking with walking with God through a full life. He lived to be 99. He died in, uh, he just died in February 2018. And he was born in um, spring of, eight, of uh, 1918. So he lived to be 99 years old in three months. Somebody said he's in the womb nine months. That means he was here 100 years nearly to the day, and uh, um, he never um, took possession of uh, being too old to do, the, to, to do the work of the ministry. In fact, this thing I was looking on YouTube said this is his last video. It might be the last video that Billy Graham's ministry left on YouTube. It is not the last video he did because I saw one. I can't find it. I think they took it down. But I saw one where he was in a wheelchair and uh, much older than this one they said was the last one he did. And uh, he said, I, re I remember what he said, that this, these days are the most important days of my life on the earth. Because he said, I can't travel, I can't, I can't uh, visit, I can't get out and go. He said, I have all day, nearly all day, every day, to sit here with God and pray and believe the word of God and pray and pray and pray and pray. In the, how, I don't know how many people ever learn early enough in life that that is the main thing that every single Christian on this planet should be doing. That should be, that should be what your day is ordered around every day. Prayer should be the top of your priority list every day. It's not because this world system has convinced us that we've got to do this, we've got to do this, we've got to be here, and we've got to be here, and we've got to do this, and, and day after day after day goes by with the bulk of the Christian population not praying until they finally get to church which might be on Sunday, and it might be every other Sunday, and it might be one or two Sundays a year. Um, and then, they, by the, the, then sometimes they don't even pray when they're there because it's just awkward feeling. When God need, God expects, when, when, he, when you receive Jesus as Lord and you're filled with his spirit, he expects you to begin to pray right now. That's why we should pray. That's why we should teach the baptism of the Holy Ghost, without um, without. I don't. I don't know what the word is that stops people from uh, from sharing the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the, with a new convert. Because that seemed to work really well in the book of Acts. Those people would get born again, water baptized, and baptized in the Holy Ghost all in the same day. Sometimes you, you can't get, you, water baptism won't work until you're born again. It just won't. You can't be baptized in the Holy Ghost until you're born again because there's no Holy Ghost in you to come up on you. But you can be you can be born again, baptized in Christ, water baptized, and come up out of the water praying in tongues. All just seems like it's all happened at the same time, and it's all part of the same package. It seems so much like that in five or six instances in the book of Acts that there are denominations in the United States that believe if you don't have all three of those, you're not really born again, which isn't true. You could be born again without praying in tongues, without the Holy Spirit coming upon you. He can be in you. 
But if you'll ask him, he'll come upon you. And the evidence that he did will be a language right there on the tip of your tongue. You can talk in if you want to. But you can't, you can't get it out of your head. You got to take it out of your belly, out of your spirit. They just got to come up out of up out of here, not out of here. You can't think about it. It's on your tongue. Just let your tongue, just let your tongue say it, and your mind will be going, "What are you doing?" You some kind of an idiot? Why is that? Because it doesn't want it doesn't want anybody doing that because the mind likes to be the boss. And in our society, we've kind of helped it along. And you know, every everybody everybody needs to go figure this stuff out. You know what a Christian needs to do is go pray this stuff out. Because there's a whole lot we've been taught that's a lie. There's a whole lot we've been taught that's not true. And if you'll pray up out of your spirit what the Spirit of God's given you, it'll change what you're thinking, and you switch over to English, and you'll be saying things that are contrary to what you've always been taught. Not Bible things so much, but uh, um, all kind of, all kind of uh, American way. It's not necessarily God way. And... Uh, to do things the way God said to do it um, is not natural. It's supernatural. It's not natural to give away something because you need more than you've got. So you take what you've got and give it away. You don't just give it away. You give it away believing God will press it down, shake it together, and cause it to come back to you bigger than it left. Because there wasn't enough, so you sent it out so God could make it bigger, and you're expecting it to come back bigger. And when it does, don't. There's another uh, example. If it's not what you were expecting, sow it again. Don't don't quit now. Don't get all giddy because it worked and you got part of it. Part of it. He gives you more than enough. He'll give you everything you need and more than that. And when you've got everything you needed and more than that, now you take care of the deal and you got more than that, give that away because you're going to need some more pretty quick anyway. And just keep shoveling it in. You keep giving it away, it'll keep coming back to you. Cast your bread on the waves, cast your bread on the water, and after a while it'll start coming back on every wave. Why? Because you got so much of it out there and it's being multiplied. It goes out there and gets multiplied pretty quick. It starts coming back. You got more than you need all the time. That's the supernatural way. Very, 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 very few people ever get over into that because we have a choke point. There's a there's a place where people will give this much. I'm comfortable with that. Why? Right. God said when you give, let's look at that, Luke 6, 36. And I haven't lost track of what we're talking about here. Uh, make Being made whole. But it works with finances too. And this is a Luke six thirty eight, not thirty six. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. That's old English for pockets. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. The measure you're using is the measure God's going to use to measure back to you 30, 60, or 100-fold. According to Mark chapter 4, that's a God measure with the word. That's, that's talking about the word there, but you say the word over your gift. When you give, when you give the gift to God... You pray 
say, Father, I'm sowing this. According to your word, you're going to press this down, shake it together, cause it to run over, and get it back to me in the name of Jesus. And, uh, and I'm believing for a hundredfold. But I've only got this, I got to pay all my, you know, I got this much. So I'm going to give you this thimble. And, and, uh, but I'm believing for the, for a hundredfold return. So God gets a thimble. You get a hundred thimbles. If you give a, water pitcher, you get a hundred water pitchers. If you give a dump truck, you'll get a hundred dump trucks. If you give a train, you get a hundred train loads. You give a cargo ship, you get a hundred cargo ships. Who's in control? The measure you measure with, that's Mark chapter 4, verse 24. Mark chapter 4, Verse 24. Take heed what you hear with what measure you meet or measure with, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. Let, let me read that in Amplified. And he said unto them, Be careful what you're hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you, and more besides will be given to you who hear. You can't get something from God if you haven't heard it because you don't know. How will they know without a preacher, Romans chapter 8? How will they know without a preacher? They won't. To he who hears... More will be given. Why? Because you heard to give and believe him for the return, and you did. More will be given. So if you, if the point here is God's given us a blessing that will make us whole. But it's not a natural thing. It's a supernatural thing, and it has to be done by faith. Um. We have to, uh, well, one more, one more verse, and this is all going to come together. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. That's not the verse I want. There's another one that says, awake to righteousness. No, this is it. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Now, it didn't say, quit sinning and God will make you righteous and he'll take away. Let me read it again. Wake. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Let me read the Amplified Bible. Awake from your drunken stupor and return to sober sense and your right minds and sin no more. For some of you have not the knowledge of God. You are utterly and willfully and disgracefully ignorant and continue to be so, lacking the sense of God's presence and all true knowledge of him. I say this to your shame. Or in other words, Almighty God lives on the inside of you, and he's, it's his, his, his good pleasure to give you the entire kingdom. Now wake up to the fact that he did that. He's made you righteous. And, and if you wake up to that, you'll quit sinning. The people preach that backwards. Quit sinning. And then this righteousness will be yours. No, no, no. You're made righteous. Start walking in the righteousness and you'll quit sinning. Quit 
Quit trying, working your fingers to the bone trying to get ahead in life and start giving. God's already put on the inside of you everything it takes to, to have a hundredfold return coming back on everything that you give. When you give to God, it's just allowing Him to give to you. God doesn't need your gift. What makes God tick? Why did God do all this in the first place? He wanted a family. He wanted kids. And he wanted to bless them. And he set up a way that if you'll just give him a, a picture of something, he'll give you a hundred pictures of it back. Because he's a giver and he and he wants to bless you. He wants to bless you with more than enough where you can't contain it. Amen. But he only got one way of doing it. You're going to have to perceive it by faith. That's all right with me, God. Give it to me and I'll give you something back. No. <laughs> Take what you've got. Wake up to the fact you've been righteous and give it to him. He's waiting on you. You're not waiting on him. He's waiting on you. He gave you everything. If there's something plugged up, it's not God plugging it up. Religion blamed God for it, but it's not true. God's, God's in the blessing, into blessing. He's a blesser. He wants you to have every good thing. Hallelujah. Wake up. So here's the point. The flesh, the worldview, the devil, the news media, the round table, the you name it in the world focuses on what's wrong. What's the Bible name? The Bible name for what's wrong? Sin, just sin consciousness. And you're reading a book of Hebrews that Jesus did what went through what he went through so you would have no more consciousness of sin. We're not supposed to be thinking about what's wrong all the time, and yet the world system has us going there continually. So number one, don't let, the, don't let them pull you in there. You don't, have to, you don't have to study sin to know what went wrong yesterday. Five or ten minutes, you'll have the gist of how it went with the world. We don't need to study that. We need to study what God did right. So point number two, the word is light, love, life. Zoe is the Greek word. Absolute life, absolute light, absolute love. There's nothing in God but light, life, and love, and pure White, hot, holy. Focus on that. And when you focus on that, since he's already on the inside of you and he's already given you his word, you focus on him, you focus on his word and what he's put on the inside of you starts turning everything right. And then when things happen, fall off a haystack, what's going to come out of your mouth? You'll know what you've been focusing on because when you get some air, something's coming out of your mouth. If it's X-rated, you've been focusing on something X-rated. If it's glory be to God, I'm healed. By his stripes, I'm healed. You've been focusing in the light and the life. And when you, when under that kind of pressure, when it comes up out of you, the anointing power of God will hit everything in your body. By the way, I walked off from that thing and, and never, never had a broken anything. And I heard some, I heard some noises that suggested some things were broke. But by the time I got up and moving around, they weren't broke. So God can do anything that you get, you allow Him place to do it. And He's no respecter of persons. He just does that because He promised it, and. 
You take advantage of it. And the third point, preach Jesus to people. Praise Jesus, thank Jesus, worship Jesus, keep Jesus, keep a Jesus focus. And uh, when you have a chance to tell somebody about him, brag on him. You know, tell them, man, God is a good God. You're, you're talking to people who are absolutely saturated with what's wrong. And to hear somebody talk about something, somebody who's perfect and good and uh, lovely and kind and pure and winsome, Philippians 4, 8, all the things Jesus is, it's peculiar to hear something like that, but it's attractive. And even, even people who want nothing to do with God, if you just start talking about him anyway, you get them in the right place at the right time when they're by theirself, and uh, the Spirit of God starts pulling on them, and that, that, that lovely and that light, it just, they have no defense. The devil can't talk them out of it. They got too close to the light. That's why he doesn't want them to get into church service or the light's coming from the pulpit. He wants to keep them away because the light is so much more powerful than the dark that if they ever get a hold of the real thing instead of religion, it's just going to set them free and they'll be... He won't be able to deal with them, and then they'll start dealing with him. That's, that's his real goal. Keep people away from the word because they too much trouble when they start believing God. Resist the devil, he'll flee. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, he'll flee. He can't help it. So the devil's keeping people from knowing that they should resist him. They don't even know they can. All right, that's it. Three points. Three point sermon, right on time. Let's stand. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this glorious day in Wyoming. The moisture. Thank you that, it's, that it didn't amount to much. Livestock are happy. Things are fed and watered. And, uh, and I thank you for the sunshine that's coming out. And uh, four or five days of sunshine right behind this thing. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for being here tonight.